Friends, welcome to this daily devotion for Friday, May 21st, 2021. I'm Pastor Mark, along with Pastor Wesley. We serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox and welcome you to this time where we can grow closer together in love of God and love of neighbor. As we begin, center yourself and let's hear the invocation inviting God into our presence today. Ever watchful God who knows our hearts and our secret desires, search us, we pray. See if there be any harm in us and lead us in your way forever and ever. We pray in the name of your own gentle spirit. Amen. Our theme this week is living in the spirit as we approach Pentecost Sunday this weekend. And our theme psalm has been Psalm 104. We'll start at verse 31 to the end. Let the Lord's glory last forever. Let the Lord rejoice in all he has made. He has only to look at the earth and it shakes. God touches the mountains and they erupt in smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I am still alive. Let my praise be pleasing to him. I'm rejoicing in the Lord. Let sinners be wiped clean from the earth. Let the wicked be no more. But let my whole being bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless the reading of the psalm today. May my whole being bless the Lord. Again, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit and how we open ourselves up to the Spirit and the Spirit's teaching and the Spirit's guidance and the Spirit's calling. Let my whole being. Sometimes we're content to give God an hour on Sunday morning or a few times a week or a part of ourselves. And if you look at the call of Christ, it's never part. Christ doesn't give us part of himself. He gives us all. God gave God's self to us fully. And so God desires us fully. And it's not something you can do. I think you can open yourself up fully wherever you are in a time and a place. But I, I think you immediately realize there's even more you have yet to offer. And so I think it's a constant challenge. How can I give more of myself today? How can I open myself more today? And and the more you're open, the more you're filled, and then the more you have to give, and then the more you receive. And it's this this beautiful dance. It's this beautiful dance. And it's regenerative, and it's renewing, and it's restorative, and it's life-changing, and it's world-changing. But you have to not be afraid to start the process. And so many of us are. So many of us are are content to give God just a a piece here and a piece there. Just Just a moment, just a little bit of time, just a little bit of money, just a little bit of this, just a little bit of that. Instead of challenging ourselves to be open to more and more, to give more and more, to be more and more to share more and more. Our final scripture reading of the, this uh, week comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, starting in verse 1. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, we want to let you know about the grace of God that was given to the churches of Macedonia. While they were being tested by many problems, their extra amount of happiness and their extreme poverty resulted in a surplus of rich generosity. Let that sink in for a second. I assure you that they gave what they could afford and even more than they could afford, and they did it voluntarily. They urgently begged us for the privilege of sharing in this service for the saints. They even exceeded our expectations because they gave themselves to the Lord first, the Lord first and to us, consistent with God's will. As a result, we challenged Titus to finish the work of grace with you the way he had started it. Be the best in this work of grace in the same way that you are the best in everything, such as faith, speech, knowledge, total commitment, and the love we inspired in you. 
I'm not giving an order, but by mentioning the commitment of others, I'm trying to prove the authenticity of your love also. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Although he was rich, he became poor for you so that you could become rich through his poverty. I'm giving you my opinion about this. It's to your advantage to do this. Since you not only started to do it last year, but you wanted to do it too. Now finish the job as well so that you finish it as with much enthusiasm as you started, giving what you can afford. A gift is appreciated because of the person, because of what a person can afford, not because of what a person can't afford. If it's apparent that it's done willingly. It isn't that we want others to have financial ease and you financial difficulties. It's a matter of equality. At the present moment, your surplus can fill their deficit so that in the future, their surplus can fill your deficit. In this way, there is equality. As it is, as it is written, the one who has gathered more didn't have too much. The one who gathered less didn't have too little. God bless the reading of the scripture today. Uh, some of you may have issues with uh, Paul's social commentary there. Uh, and if you do, I challenge you to continue to read the Bible because you should be challenged. <laughs> Our capitalistic society should be challenged in the way we treat each other uh, and the inequality, in- inequality, inequality uh, of our world, uh, ter- terrifying, <laughs> the fast inequality of wealth uh, in our world. But Paul is calling us. Again, I, I love how he does this because it's he- he- he's teaching about generosity in a way that I think much of the church has forgotten, and I know Wesley's been working on this a lot with our congregation, the understanding of it's not about you need to do this. It's not about God's going to get you if you don't do this. It's not about, yeah, we got to pay the bills and all this. It's not about you pay your dues. It, that's, that's garbage. It's not biblical. Paul is saying we give because when we give, our lives are transformed. There's something about generosity that fills us. If you want to be increased in the Holy Spirit, give. Give of yourself and you'll find yourself filled. And then you give more and you find yourself filled. It it is life changing. For all the prayer, for all the going to church, for all the sermons I've preached, for all the, the youth trips and mission trips and all the things I've done, the thing that has changed my life the most, the thing that has helped me grow in love the most is giving and generosity period. There's no question in my mind. The thing that has pushed me further, helped me grow more, is giving more every year. And that's what we do. That's what we do in my family. I've told you, and that's why we do it. Jennifer and I, when I, when I got married, you know, all up into that life, I'd always given 10%. That's what the Bible says. Give 10%, 10% of my gross. I gave my gross income. Uh, 10% of my gross income back to the church, give it to God, first fruits, good job me. Uh, and then I got married and uh, my, you know, talked to my wife and, you know, worked with my wife about that. And she started to challenge me and she said, well, that's not enough. And so we give 1% in additional, we give 10% to the church, but we give 1% away of our income for every year that we've been married. And we've continued that for now 11 years of marriage. And we'll continue to do that because it's pushing us 1% a year. It's not, (laughs) you know, you're not just giving all of our money and living on the street, right? But we are constantly, continuously challenging ourselves to give more, to be more generous. And, And when we had nothing we were okay. And when we've had a lot, we've been okay because every time we're constantly trying to push ourselves. And every time we give everything we can, we find ourselves filled in more ways than we ever knew we could imagine. And I'm not talking about worldly possessions. I'm talking about spiritual possessions. I'm talking about spiritual reality. I'm talking about life-changing reality. Are you anxious? Are you afraid? Are you discouraged? Are you angry? Give. There's a lot of things you can do. That's why we have a lot of spiritual disciplines. But I'm telling you for me, 
generosity has been, and it is a cornerstone and a value of my family because it has been one of the most life-changing things in my experience and in my faith journey. And it continues to be. And if all the other things fail, I know I'm doing that well. And I know I'm growing in that area. Something to think about. Our final reading for the week comes from With Open Hands by Henry Nouwen. Just, if you, if you don't have experience with Henry, just great, great mystic uh, and a contemplative author in our tradition. Prayer leads you to see new paths and to hear new melodies in the air. Prayer is the breath of your life, which gives you freedom to go and to stay where you wish, to find the many ways, the many signs which point out the way to a new land. Praying is not simply some necessary component in a daily schedule of a Christian or a source of support in time of need, nor is it restricted to Sunday morning or as a frame to surround mealtimes. Praying is living. Thank you, Henry, because amen and amen. This devotion is a time of centering so that you can move into a time of prayer and maybe more intentional prayer when you're done with this. But then all day, prayer is communication with God. Very simply, that's the, the simplest way I can exp- uh, express it to you. Prayer is communication to God, and we are called to pray continuously, pray without ceasing, because Jesus modeled for us what it meant to be in constant communication with God, to have God always in you, in your ear, in your mind, in your heart, in your actions, in your words. That's the goal. And again, you do it more and more. You do it more and more. It, it, it's, and the more and more you give, the more and more you receive. And so it becomes easier. And it's a muscle you have to work. I mean, you have to train your prayer life. It just doesn't happen. But the more, the more you give, the more you do receive, I believe in this. And, and it becomes easy. And it becomes second nature and you still need to, to fill it and feed it and, and cultivate it. But it's an every day and every moment and every minute thing. Friends, I pray for you. I don't know what God is challenging you to do. I don't know what the Spirit's calling you to do. I bet it's something amazing. I bet it's something exciting. I bet it's something life transforming and maybe... You're like, I, I've, I've lived all the life I can, or I've done all these terrible things, or wherever you are. We make all kinds of excuses. God's not through with you yet. And even if you're on death's door today as you're watching this, I don't think God's through with you yet. That's my hope in eternal life. That God, even at the moment of death, God's not through with us yet. That there's still more. And so I'm praying for you. All of you, always feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to email, text, call, Zoom, visit if it's possible. And let's talk. What what do you need? What's the stumbling block for you? What do you need to focus on so that you can grow, that you can receive more and give more and be more? Because God wants the best for you. God wants you to be truly a person of peace. Hope, joy, and love. Let's pray. Lord, I pray for all those who are listening today, all those who are watching and joining us this week, all of those who are taking time to be in devotion with you. Fill them with your spirit. Set their hearts on fire. Increase their capacity so they may give more, receive more, and be in the midst of your presence all day long. We pray this in your holy name, praying the prayer your son Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this weekend at UMCNL, uh, we are going to be celebrating Pentecost. And so you can come to church. You can sign up umcnl.com for in-person church or, of course, watch us online here on YouTube or on Facebook. Join us for worship. 
We want you to be with us so that we can be together in the spirit. Uh, if you're part of another congregation, I encourage you to worship with that congregation. Uh, and you can join me back here on Monday. And I look forward to that. So go with God's blessing and hear the benediction. Come upon us all, spirit of the living God. Melt our hard hearts. Use us for your purpose wherever you are sending us today. May God bless you, friends. Amen.